Hey guys, Josh from CaliforniaThroughMyLens.com. Today we're outside of Anza Borrego and we're gonna go see all the crazy metal sculptures they have down there. Let's see how many we can find before sunset. Anza Borrego is an awesome desert state park about two hours outside of San Diego. As you make the drive in, be sure to stop at the Ranchita Yeti, which is always fun for a photo. From there, the road gives way to an amazing view out over the Desert State Park and a long, windy, gradual downhill road to Borrego Springs. From Borrego Springs, you'll make your way to the roundabout and this is going to be the starting point for your exploration into the Galetto Meadows sculptures. We already found our first one right at this traffic circle. The sculptures are all over the Borrego Springs area and you'll either head north or south on Borrego Springs Road. I headed north first and I passed a few of the sculptures along the way as I wanted to make my way to the Sea Serpent first before a lot of people got there. Statue number two, the Sea Serpent. This is definitely the most popular one. I'm not gonna number all the ones I see. I'll just put it on the bottom of the screen. But number two. The Sea Serpent is the best introduction into the Galetta Meadows metal sculptures. It's over 350 feet long crossing the road and it's incredible to see in person. What's so crazy about this serpent is that it actually spans the entire road. These sculptures came to be when the owner of the land, Dennis Avery, decided that he wanted to add many freestanding art pieces to his property. He owned multiple plots around Borrego Springs, so he enlisted Ricardo Bersetta to make over 130 sculptures that are scattered throughout them. This is the official Galetta Meadows estate, so I guess now there might be a little bit of a driving tour, so we're gonna go that way, see what we can find. Pretty much all of the sculptures are off the main road, so you'll have to drive on a dirt road to get to each of them. That being said, it was fine with a two-wheel drive car when I went. Looks like this is number 73 of the statues. This one must be, uh, huh. Doesn't have anything, but I guess there's a lot. <laughs> this is number 73 and 74. There are a lot of sculptures. There's actually over 130. What do you guys think? Do all these count? That would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It's like 13 statues we just saw right here. This one's pretty cool, it's like a Native American bust. Right next to that, there's four turtles. One of the funnest parts is that it's kind of like a scavenger hunt. You can see one out there, there's another one over here. Just kind of look around and you see all of them. This Jeep is definitely another one of the coolest ones. Look at how they even did the details on the tires. And then the hair on these people. So cool. All right, I'm getting sidetracked. I don't have very much time before sunset, so gotta keep going. One of the things that always strikes me about these sculptures is the attention to detail. Many of the different sculptures have hair and scales and other small intricate pieces that are incredibly detailed. Here's a giant sloth riding another giant sloth. Does that count as two sculptures or one?
You can see how big that is with my car right there. You guys are in for a treat. The next ones are my favorite. I think I've said that multiple times, but these are actually my favorite. There they are. You can see them. These ones are so cool. Check it out, the legendary battle between the scorpion and the grasshopper. Who would win? Let me know in the comments. This has always been one of my favorite ones as these sculptures are massive and it's just crazy to see them sitting in the desert like this. That shadow of the scorpion's tail is awesome. The grasshopper even has their invisible wings. Three more. One, two, three. It's got like four tusks. All of these sculptures I'm exploring in this section are just off to the left as you're driving back from the sea serpent to the traffic circle. So we made it to the south side of that traffic circle. Just as the sun's going down, this is our first one, this massive eagle. There's this massive bird, and then it's, there's like a smaller bird and a snake and another bird. That's crazy. Look at how intricate these feathers are. Saying goodbye to this one and I see a bunch more out there and even over there so it shouldn't be too hard to see them all. This looks like it's gonna be the horse area. There's one right here and then there's another 10 or 12 out there. So get to add another dozen sculptures to the list. I stand corrected. This area is not all horses. It's all saber tooth tigers hunting horses. So there's this one and then the ones we saw Back there is a tiger hunting a horse. And then there's another tiger stalking a horse right there. It looks like the birds have got revenge on this saber toothed tiger. These saber toothed tigers are picking on somebody their own size. So I thought that last area was the horse area, but this side is definitely the horse side. This southern section of sculptures focuses specifically on a few select animals like horses and saber-toothed tigers. It's pretty cool as they're displayed in many different forms of motion as you're driving through the area. I love the way that these elephants are lit up by that desert sunset on the mountains behind them. There's one more shot just for a sense of scale. That's how big these sculptures are and most of them are around that size. All right, it looks like there's one more left way out there. This is a fitting one to end on. It's a giant bird that is holding a pig. That is a crazy one. 
Even though this was my last one of the day, my total was just around 60 and there's over 130, so I saw less than half. So that's it for all the sculptures in the daytime, but I'm gonna stick around for another hour because this is one of the best places to see the night sky. I'm gonna take a few pictures before we leave. The Anza Borrego area is a dark sky community, so they take light pollution really seriously and it's an amazing place for night photography. These shots are over a few times that I visited Anza Borrego to shoot the sculptures at nighttime. If you want to get into night photography yourself, it's definitely a great place to spend some time. And if you'd like to see a video on night photography in the future, let me know in the comments. That's it for my time in Anza Borrego. Thanks for exploring with me. If you get a chance to come out here at nighttime, it's incredible. It's one of the best places I've ever seen in California to see stars. We'll see you on the next video.